50k what <laughs> thank you so much everybody for supporting my youtube channel so much we have hit 50k recently which to me is a huge number youtube is not my primary platform i stream on twitch full time and i'm a chess broadcaster so youtube for me as much as i love it is a passion project i put a lot of effort into it but it could never be my main thing to do unfortunately and yet you guys are supporting it so much thank you so much i have posted about this on my social media saying that we're gonna celebrate it with an ama asking questions from you guys so i'm gonna be in this video answering all sorts of questions regarding life lessons childhood career relationship anything that i can share with you guys in this video within the most popular most common questions that you have asked me on twitter instagram facebook youtube community and everywhere else i put the picture let's get started if 15 year old you knew what your life would be like now what would she say to be making a living from chess and by talking into a webcam nah you must be dreaming Memento, thank you so much for the congratulations. In terms of what is my best, most positive chess memory, I think it would be the moment when my sister and I both won the Hungarian championship. She won the under 10 age group in Hungary and I won under 12. So both of us were champions of our country that very same year. It was cool. And then we traveled to the world championship together to Spain. Amber, thank you so much for the questions. I'm gonna pick number two. What is it like living with Kevin, especially during lockdown and quarantine this year? The year 2020, I always say in my streams, is a hella challenging one for everybody. I hope that you are well. I hope that you are taking care of yourselves. To us with Kevin, it obviously meant a lot of changes, including the fact that I used to travel every month my family is in another country, most of my friends live in different countries. My job was to travel to tournaments and broadcast chess tournaments. So that was obviously out of the question. I was also going to gaming conventions with Kevin. We were traveling with our friends. We were also going to have a holiday together in Spain. And all of that was cancelled. And not just that we couldn't travel, but we also couldn't see anybody for a long time. Only through video calls. Or messages but in person most of the time it's him and me the two of us 99% of the time and we were never in a situation like this that we have to rely on each other this much that we are the only people we see we are the only people we talk to so at the beginning obviously it was really difficult because of all the uncertainty of what's gonna happen with the world situation will this be a virus that most people will be infected by what happens to our loved ones their health a lot of concerning issues regarding the general situation in the world and how will that impact our lives but i think what happens with all the difficulties and struggles one goes through if this is meant to be it makes you stronger and i'm very happy that even though this has been a really difficult year really challenging one for everybody and for ourselves as well. It only made us stronger, it only made us get closer to each other and understand each other on a deeper level. So, so as much as it has been a challenge, it also has made the bond between us a lot stronger and I couldn't be happier for that, that is for sure. I know you've mentioned wanting pets a few times in past streams, but have you thought more about it? Is there a particular type of pet dog you would like to get? And how would you know when you are ready to get one? Noelle, I think you know which dog I would love to have, but I don't know if I will ever get one. I'm obsessed with French Bulldogs and Pugs, but uh, I also am aware of their uh, health issues. And that would concern me if my dog would be struggling on a daily basis with their breathing and such. So probably if we end up getting a dog, it would be the type that Kevin is obsessed with. He also has his favorite type of dog and that's a Bernese Mountain Dog. Before we thought we couldn't get one because we traveled quite a lot, but uh, now that we don't go anywhere, maybe it's time to reconsider having a pet because we both would love to be a dog owner, dog parent. Bernese Mountain Dog, most likely. What's your favorite alternate Anna? Goth Anna, Cyborg Anna, which is the most fun to be? 
Good question, Kelly. I think recently I have gotten quite addicted to the space bun look, the e-girl Anna. But among the characters I have played in videos or streams, the most challenging one is goth Anna and I think she'll need to make an appearance since it's almost Halloween. Welcome back, you monster. Oh, she's lovely. She's lovely. <laughs> no, she's definitely not a monster. But yeah, goth Anna is uh, quite the opposite of me. Cyborg Anna, I do like the look of Cyborg Anna. She's really cool and smart, unlike me. Big brain. <laughs> is E5 hanging? E5 is always hanging. Will you make a video time capsule? Just ask yourself questions and such. It may look like this. I have seen this video by Mr. Beast and I think it's a great idea. So let's record one right now. Ready? All right, so that has been my time capsule video. Will be released in a year on October the 23rd in 2021. I'm curious how that video will be received and what will future Anna think about it. This was a fun idea. Thank you so much, Casey. What is your biggest strength and your biggest flow? I would say it's the same. My biggest strength and flow, I think, is that I'm very straightforward and honest. It can be an advantage, it can be a strength because I feel like people trust me a lot because I'm genuine, I really mean what I say, it comes from the bottom of my heart. But it also means I'm an open book and I get hurt very easily. I'm out there on the internet with my own little thoughts, my own little world being exposed and put out there. The internet is a big place and not everybody wants the best for you. I do get a lot of criticism as well, I do get a lot of hate. Well, maybe not a lot, but if they don't like something in my videos, in my content, in my streams, it means they don't like the real me. Because what I'm showing is Anna, it's IRL Anna, it's the real Anna, and if you don't like it, it means you also don't like me as a person. There's no other layer, there's no character play, it's me, and if you have issues with what you see, you have issues with the real Anna and her real feelings. It sometimes hurts, it does, but I try not to much notice of um, the trolls and the internet opinion in general, whether it's good or bad. I try not to base my happiness and how well I'm doing in terms of my content on what people say. But also on this very same note, because Puffy asked me if I have an internet persona or I'm a real personality, I think I have partially answered this already, but I wanted to add to it that I didn't have a choice. It's not that I decided one day that I'm gonna be a creator who is herself, who wants to be authentic, who will not put on a mask. I gave my first interview when I was 11 years old. Mióta jársz versenyekre? Eleven-year-old Anna was never told that in the future she will have quite a big audience on the internet. As a chess player, a chess prodigy, so to say, as a kid, I was approached quite many times by the media and I had to keep answering questions in the most honest way. They always asked me about how did I do at the tournament, who is my trainer, how do I prepare, how do I combine chess with school very real questions with very real answers so for me media and all the attention on the internet has always been about me answering genuinely questions and talking about my real life it never occurred to me that 5 10 15 20 years later i would perhaps prefer that not my whole life is out there as an open book so my content is based on who i am it's anna the real anna what is your secret talent that none of you know yet? Well, I guess if I don't know of it, I'll need your help to discover it. What do you guys think? What is my secret talent? Do I have any? Please help, comment below. Anna, how are you so positive in life? You seem fun and optimistic. Do you feel low sometimes? P.S. Anna, you are the best. First of all, I'm not the best. Second, I also have moments when I'm down, when I'm sad, when I feel worried, stressed, all the negative emotions one can have. Yeah, I am experiencing all of that just as much. But I think the key to being more positive and 
happy in life is if you first of all appreciate the things you have in your life. I am so grateful for my family, for my friends, the life I have. I try to every morning after waking up think about all the people in my life, all the people that are important to me and all the things I'm grateful for. That's how I start my day. And even if there are always difficulties to always things to worry about, especially during this year 2020, I'm just trying to shift the focus to what I said already, gratitude, things I am happy for, things I appreciate and the little things in life. I do think that it matters a lot. If you know what you love, do more of what you love dance, listen to music, sing, draw, paint, go outside, go for a walk, ride a bike, whatever you can do within the restrictions obviously of the year 2020, but know yourself and know what makes you be in a good mood and try to do those things on a regular basis because it's in your control how you take the world. Things are as they are, it's up to you and your perspective, your attitude on whether you see the bright side of life. So try to focus on the positive things. Try to make sure that you put yourself into a good mood even when things are bad because life is short. You don't want to waste your time being depressed, sad. There are moments when we need to grieve. I lost my grandmothers last year, both of them, and that keeps making me sad every single day when I think about them. But I try to cherish their memory and think about the good moments I had with them and not the fact that I don't have them anymore in my life. I'm gonna cry if I keep talking about this, but what I want to highlight, there's always something to celebrate in life. Even if you feel like you're in a dark tunnel, there's something good coming for you. There will be an improvement. Things will go better. Just believe in it. Try to appreciate what you have and believe that things will get better even if in this very moment that's not how you feel. Try to get yourself into a good mood, dress up, do everything as best as you can even if you think this isn't your best day. Try to make it a better one. You have the control, you and only you. Can you cook? Yes, I don't cook very elaborate dishes, but I can cook decently healthy. I cook for both of us here in this tiny household. And I'm not huge on spending a lot of time in the kitchen, but I do like to eat well. So I try to cook every day, eat healthy. Yeah, food is good. <laughs> Did you take any personal lessons from playing chess at a high level? Patience, as you highlighted, is definitely a good lesson, but if I were to highlight one thing about competing professionally, what I have learned from it is that confidence is key. Believing in yourself at whatever you do, the world will take you at your own estimate. You need to believe it first, you need to see it first, even if everybody else would not think that you can ever get there. Do not let the rest, the crowds, drown out your passion. If you dedicate a lot of time to something, if you put in the hard work and you believe it, you can see it, if you can visualize it, if you can see that in the future you will be there one day, then all that hard work will pay off. But you need to have the confidence, you need to believe in yourself and then the rest will most likely come. Even if you don't get there fully, at least you're going in the right direction and you're taking the right steps. But confidence and believing in yourself is key even when no one else believes in you. How was it growing up in Hungary in the 90s? What's your favorite and least favorite thing about your homeland? Hungary in the 90s was still just recovering from the impact of the Soviet Union. There were two type of cars, the Trabant and the Lada. The Lada was the better one, but my family had the Trabant. It was not a very safe car and it was also very loud and cold. I remember spending winters in my family traveling in the Trabant and it would be moving like this when you're sitting in the back. We had a blanket on my sister and me because obviously it had no heating and the car itself uh, was an adventure. An adventure to travel with. That would be definitely one of my bigger post-Soviet Union memories. Um, those cars and just how the country started recovering from that economical impact. Nowadays what I appreciate the most about Hungary obviously is my family. They still live in Hungary and most of my university friends and childhood friends also live in Hungary. 
so my family first and foremost this is the best thing about Hungary and my friends but the worst politics I don't like to read the news most certainly not about Hungary blink twice as Kevin is keeping you in his basement You've been around some of the chess greats. Give us an awesome or hilarious story that not many people know. I've beaten the world champion, Magnus Carlsen. True story. It may not have been just a normal game of chess. It may have been hand and brain, the format where you are paired up with another player. One of you is calling out the pieces, pawn, knight, bishop, and the hand has to choose which pawn to move and where. The brain cannot communicate which piece they want to move, they can only say the name of the piece. So I played hand and brain chess together with another world-class chess player, Shakri Armamedero. We were on one team against Magnus Carlsen and Fiona Style Anthony, my good friend Fiona. And we won a couple of games, including games where Shakriar was the brain, he was calling out the pieces, and I was making the moves on the board against Magnus. He was also playing, but Fiona was the brain, Fiona was calling out the pieces, so I somehow managed to take advantage of that and win the game against Magnus. Not many can say that they have beaten the world champion, right? <laughs> no, it was hand and brain, it was still good fun. Back in Waikanze, years ago, um, just a fun event. As I already said on my Twitch stream, unfortunately there's no annotated game about it, it wasn't recorded. It was just a fun night in the Netherlands during the Tata Steel Chess Tournament. Can you tell us your favorite first mod ever? Chesbe, how could I not choose my first ever moderator? Thank you so much for your continuous help and support. You have been there for me from the very beginning and I cannot thank you enough, girl. Also. Speaking of Chess Bay, we will definitely be having more of the sub battles, sub wars between GM Hikaru, Gotham Chess, and myself. He signed up to play, and we weren't sure if we should put him in because his name's not the most family friendly. <laughs> <laughs> Those are some of the coolest collabs I have had in chess. And there's more to come, there's plenty more to come. What is your favorite thing, game event collaboration that you have done on your channel? Congrats on 50k, now to 100k. Thank you, Rachel. It may sound cheesy, but I think my favorite thing that I have ever achieved on my channel or done on my channel is the community. With all the activities and collaborations and variety streams, I think the one thing that's always the common feature and my favorite part of streaming. I have this wonderful community, a bunch of friendly, positive, kind people that are there to support each other and hang out in a positive space. The community, for sure, is the biggest thing about my Twitch streams and I'm very lucky. I'm very lucky to have you guys, the wholesome tomatoes. What is your favorite movie or TV show? I don't watch much TV or movies, unfortunately. I, I wish I could spare more time for that. But uh, one of the shows I liked a lot was How I Met Your Mother. I like comedy-based, comedy-style TV shows. And nowadays what we watch most of the time at our lunch breaks with Kevin is uh, Dragon's Den. Or in American version, I believe Shark Tank. It makes good content and also insightful. You can learn from it on a business perspective. Big brain, big brain business. I recall you mentioning on stream that you always like to learn and grow as much as you can. So my question is, other than chess, what's the thing you've most enjoyed learning or what subject do you find most interesting? Good question. I started learning the piano again because that was a project for me a few years ago. Well, a couple of years already. Back in the days when I taught in a primary school in Madrid. So I'd love to learn a little bit more. I'm still just a very beginner at piano, but I do enjoy music a lot. And maybe one day I could play my favorite songs on the piano. That would be great. Apart from that, on my streams, I'm gonna do learning sessions with my PogChamp students at PogChamps, if you guys know, that was an event series and will be an event series hopefully next year too, where gamers, big streamers, 
learn to play chess with our help and then compete at chess. So my streamer, gamer, students, I'm hoping that they will teach me their main skills. I'm going to learn Hearthstone, hopefully from Hafu, Poker from Easy Videos, Finten. Wagamama already said that he'll teach me Dota. I have Yamato Cannon as my new student. League of Legends. I'd love to have better League of Legends skills and maybe Minecraft from Call Me Carson. We'll see if we can set those up, but I would love to be the noob this time and not the coach. I'm always ready to learn. Which song that Kevin sings to you is your favorite? All of them? Honestly, it's just a blessing that I have someone in this house with a good voice unlike mine. He sings every day when he practices the covers he's gonna do for his videos. He practices them for weeks and I get to hear this private concert on a daily basis. It's huge. It's beautiful. He has such an amazing voice and amazing skills in general at everything he does. He's just good at everything he does. It's annoying but it's true. But yeah, if I had to choose, I guess I would choose Country Roads because that's a song that we rewrote back in Berlin in 2019 at the event where we met way before we realized that we were gonna end up dating we wrote a song together based on the one and only David Hasselhoff and that was the Hoff version of Country Road so that song to us will always be special in that way too TwitchCon Berlin Country Roads Take Me Home Hasselhoff The t-shirt reference Oh yeah Take me home Hasselhoff In your arms <laughs> We belong You're the Hoffman The Night Rider Drive me home Hasselhoff I suppose this might be a bit preliminary but in honor of this milestone do you have any new goals to strive for? Yes, a lot of them, but first and foremost to keep creating wholesome positive content. I try to inspire people, I try to make people feel better. I hope I can keep doing that as much as possible. And when it comes to milestones, I think 50k for my Twitch channel would be huge. Twitch is a way smaller platform than YouTube, so the fact that our channel is approaching 50k on Twitch too is a big achievement to me and the community. When it comes to YouTube, 100k sounds like a lot. That's the first play button on YouTube. Will we ever get a play button? I might have said something about that in the video capsule I recorded earlier, but yeah, that would be great. It will still make me the third best content creator in this house, but yeah, that will be an honor. I don't know if we'll get there. Hopefully, hopefully. Let's see. We'll figure it out soon, I guess. Thank you so much everybody for sending in your questions. There have been so many other great interesting questions that I couldn't address because I didn't want to make the video very lengthy, but maybe we could do another AMA session in the future if you like this one, if you found it interesting to listen to my rambling and thought process. As I said, is the IRL Anna. Whether you like it or not, this is me. This is who I am. Thank you so much for your support. It means a lot to me. Do let me know in the comments what is my secret skill, was that the question? I would love to discover it. And in general, if you have liked this AMA, which question, which answer did you find the most insightful? Which one surprised you the most? Do let me know about your thoughts in the comment section below. And I shall see you in the next video. Thank you for your support, as always. Much love. Bye for now.